Um, and this is one that I have been wanting to do a book study on for a long time. And so I'm finally being selfish in doing it. Uh, it's by learning to walk, it's learning to walk in the dark by Barbara Brown Taylor. It is at 5.45 ish on Wednesdays. And if you're like, that's during Wednesday night program. Yes, it is. Um, there have been some asking about, hey, can we do some programming for the parents? And so that was one of the things we thought we would do is try book study. Um, it's a little bit more thinking, a lot of feeling, but a little bit more thinking. It's about different ways to think about light and dark instead of just good and bad. Um, and so it's, Barbara Brown Taylor is one of my favorite authors. Uh, she reminds me of me a little bit. So it, it'll be a good study. It is a little bit more dense, but it is still a lovely read. It's one of the best books I've ever read. So if you want on the table right there, I can see a mug with pens in it. That has, there's a copy of each book um, if you look through stitches, you can see what I thought was important because I underlined it. Um, there's a page with information about the study, a uh, short synopsis of the book, and then a little bit from either the first chapter, the introduction, and then a sign-up sheet if you're interested. Those starts, Learning to Walk in the Dark starts Wednesday the 21st at 5.45. Uh, the first week, I am planning to provide pizza, and then we will figure out how we will feed ourselves from there. And then, Stitches starts Thursday the 22nd at 1.30, and depending on how many people sign up, we'll determine where in the church we will be. So if you have any questions, you can come ask me, because I'm leading both studies, or you can ask Wendy, and she will get the answer to you. Other announcements. Uh, it's meeting week. So Christian Ed after worship property committee Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Mission study was canceled because we don't have, not mission study, mission committee was canceled because we don't have anything to talk about. Mission study, you still have to do your homework. Sorry, you don't get to not do it. Mission committee was canceled because we don't have anything to talk about. Um, activities this week, chair robots Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10. The blood drive is on Thursday. It's not too late to sign up. I do know that the later appointments are full, but we do still have appointments at the beginning. Um, men's group on Saturday at 7.30, and then the friends kickoff is Saturday at 7 p.m. Um, and then upcoming, uh, Sunday, Sunday, like that, Sunday, Sunday, is on September 11th. That is when Sunday school starts, so adult Sunday school will be at 9 o'clock. Kids Sunday school starts at whenever after we get to that point in the service. And then after church, we will have Sundays for fellowship, so please stick around afterwards. And then when the Wednesday night program carnival starts is September 14th at 5.30 p.m. Um, if you're like, I don't usually do this, but I would love to help out, we could probably use more bodies for the carnival, so please come and help if you can. Wendy. During adult Sunday school, we don't have an organized Childcare at that time, but if there is a need, I will figure it out. Yes. So if you would love to go to adult Sunday school, but you're you've got kids and you don't want them to just run around doing circles and tug on you, let me know. I'll, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll need a nursery or something. Yeah. So if you have a kid and you would like to participate in adult adult Sunday school, um, and you're worried about childcare, talk to Wendy. If there is enough of an interest, we'll figure it out. Like that's kind of the theme around here. If there's interest and there's energy, we'll figure out and make it work. Any other announcements? I have a question about the blood drive. Um, is it appointment only or like can you walk in in the afternoon when you get off work? No, appointment only. All right, sorry. <laughs> that was, yeah, no. And I believe if you donate somewhere else, you can you can have the do the donation counts on our drive. Yes, sir. So I don't know what that is. If you had a drive, if you had a drive, I've tried, tried, and unless you 
you've had a successful drive or a documented drive, they, they don't have us in the books. So, so we have to have one that's recorded or, or successful. Okay. I, I, there's probably like some numbers or something that I'll have to get to you. I'll look on the website. Okay. okay. So I'm going to put it like this. There seems to be some energy and questions around the blood drive. Chris and Wendy, probably Chris, because Wendy will be leading a meeting. Find Chris at the church. She'll be able to answer all of your questions or pretend she knows the answer. That's all good. I got the point of contact if I don't know. Yes. I Thursday women, are you meeting? Yes. Okay. I don't have that on my sheet. I'm not going to place any blame. I'm just going to say it's not on my sheet. But yes, Thursday women is meeting 1130 at Brothers Restaurant. Okay. In Rapid City. Are there any other announcements? If not, then let us take a moment to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Please join me in the call to worship. God forms us on the wheel of life. And the to play. God shapes us onto holy vessels. Bearing the mark of God's wise crafting. May we remain strong and useful through years of faithful and obedient service. Living in Christ's light, serving in Christ's name. Please join me in singing, Help Us Accept Each Other. Please rise. Question mark? Exactly. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Let us confess our sin and brokenness, seeking God's reforming in Christ's life. Please join me in prayer. God of power and justice, like Jeremiah, you weep over those who wander from you. Turn aside to other gods and enter into the chaos and destruction. By your tears and through your mercy, teach us your ways and write them on our hearts so that we may follow faithfully the path you show us. Nope, I'm just being weird. <laughs> We lift our confession and prayers in the name of Jesus, our Savior and God. Amen. Amen. God chooses to be the potter, molding us into something new, reforming us and saving us through the example and sacrifice of Christ. May we know that God makes us anew, proclaiming our salvation and hope in our faith. I declare to you in the name of Jesus, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Peace and love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pass the peace of Christ to one another. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Yep. Please join me in singing, Open the heart, Eyes of My Heart. So good to see so many of you up here this morning. I 
have some disappointing news. We don't have Sunday school today. Oh, I know. But that's okay because we have communion. And next Sunday, we'll have an extra special, fun Sunday school. Paint might be involved. All right, so today we are going to talk about asking why. Your parents ever tell you to do something and you say, why? Okay. What does your parents tell you to do when you say why? Kaylee? Um, they tell me to clean my room. Oh, they tell you to clean your room and you say why? And what does your mom say? Because it's messy. Right. Or more specific, because I said so. <laughs> what is what is your what is your parents? When my mom said to go outside, and I said, why? And then she said, because I said. Right. Go outside and go, why? Because I said so. Fair enough. So, my mom and me had to use the first so I said, why? Yeah. Did she say, because I said so? Yeah. These are some great examples. Any others? Willow? Oh, yeah. Sometimes we ask to do something and the answer is no. And we say, why? <laughs> so why do parents say, because I said so? All right, Haley, what do you got? So when you grow up, you can learn better. Okay. I'm going on a trip after church. You're going on a trip after church? I, I know you got something. Why do you, why does your parents say because I said so? I can I can see it in your eyes. Because they're mad at you. Because they're mad at you, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you've got them to that point of frustration where they're just like, because I said so. <laughs> I can relate. So, honestly though, parents and, and grandparents now, you can attest that there's a reason. There's a reason you have to brush your teeth, Merida. It's so that your teeth stay clean and healthy. And there's a reason you have to clean your room, Haley, so that you don't trip and die over all the toys. <laughs> and there's a reason you have to go outside and play. Because it is important for you to have fresh air. fresh air and energy and all the wonderness of outside and to give your mom a break. So there are lots of important reasons, but sometimes parents just say, because I said so, we're probably a little frustrated and exhausted. And by the way, you really can't play your tablet all the time. It's just not good for you. All of the science research is telling us parents that all the time. So, good kind of does the same thing a little bit. Because there are lots of important things that God wants us to know and do because they're important. It's important to love your neighbors, right? And it's important, Merida and Willow, it's important to follow and work to be a good person and close to God. And sometimes God, I think, gets frustrated with us and just says, because I said so. Because sometimes we just need to do the right thing. Do you ever think about God sometimes gets frustrated with people? Yes. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't want to be God. That's way too many kids. All right, let's pray. So we're going to fold our hands and close our eyes. Dear God, Dear God 
thank you for parents. I thank you for wisdom. Help me follow your word and not just ask why. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I think we still have some color pages for older kids if you want them. If not, we've got the busy bags and try and pay attention to Pastor Rob a little bit. Okay? Please join me in reading Luke 12, 22 34. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. There is more to life than food, and more to the body than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither plant nor harvest. They have no silo or barn, yet God feeds them. You are worth so much more than birds, who among you, by worrying, can add a single moment to your life. If you can't do such a small thing, why worry about the rest? Notice how the lilies grow? They don't wear themselves out with work, and they don't spin cloth. But I say to you that even Solomon, in all his splendor, wasn't dressed like one of these. If God dresses grass in the field so beautifully, even though it's alive today and tomorrow it's thrown into the furnace, how much more will God do for you, you people of weak faith? Don't chase after what you will eat and what you will drink. Stop worrying. All the nations of the world long for these things. Your Father knows that you need them. Instead, Desire his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Don't be afraid, little flock, because your father delights in giving you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to those in need. Make for yourselves wallets that don't wear out, a treasure in heaven that never runs out. No thief comes near here, near there, and no moth destroys. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be too. Our second scripture lesson this morning comes from the prophecy. I'm used to having a table. Okay, the prophecy of Jeremiah, chapter 18, verses 1 through 12. Jeremiah received the Lord's word. Go down to the potter's house. And I'll give you instructions about what to do there. So I went down to the potter's house. He was working on the potter's wheel. But the piece he was making was flawed while still in his hands. So the potter started on another, as seemed best to him. Then the Lord's word came to me. House of Israel, can't I deal with you like this potter, declares the Lord? Like the clay in the potter's hand, so you are in mine, house of Israel. At any time I may announce that I will dig up, pull down, and destroy a nation or kingdom. But if that nation I have warned turned up, turns from its evil, then I will relent and not carry out the harm I intended for it. At the same time I announce that I will build and plant up a nation. But if that nation displeases or obeys me, then I'll relent and not carry out the good I intended for it. Now say to the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, This is what the Lord says. I am a powder preparing a disaster for you. I am working out a plan against you. So each one of you turn from your evil ways, reform your ways and your actions. But they said, What's the use? We will 
follow our own plans and act according to our own willful, evil hearts. Okay, this morning, I'm going to ask a couple questions, just so I can gauge where we are collectively, and kind of bring us to... So, I'm going to confess that sometimes I get feedback that I don't, wasn't expecting. One of the pieces of feedback I've gotten is sometimes I forget that I'm seminary trained and I use words that don't always, are known by everyone. And so I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page when I use certain words. And so my first question is, can anyone tell me what the lectionary is? No. Wendy can tell us. Wendy, what's the lectionary? Lectionary is a uh, uh, weekly and daily uh, scriptures that have been combined by lots of really smart, bright people into a format where lots of different churches are using the same church scripture potentially every time. Yes. Most. Um, it's the lectionary that Reform and other Protestant churches use is called the Revised Common Lectionary. And the idea is, so I don't preach on the same passage every four weeks. It's a four-year, three-year rotation. And it gets you most of the Bible. It gets you a big portions of the Old Testament. It gets you most of the Gospels. It gets you a good portion of the epistles. And so it's a three-year rotation. But in 154 weeks, no, 156 weeks, sometimes 157, you can't get the entire Bible. And so the lectionary makes decisions and cuts certain things out. And this is one of the passages that the lectionary cuts weird. So the lectionary stops at verse 11. Can, Wendy, can you pull up verse 12 again for me? 12. 12. So this is the verse that the lectionary cuts out. They're like, no. We're going to do what we want to do. We're not going to listen to God. And so for me, if you just stop at verse 11, it's one of those... You can tell that God's trying to be pointed. He's poking a little bit. I'm preparing a disaster for you, but you can be turned away. And so if you stop at 11, you get this idea that maybe God's going to relent. Maybe God will want to relent. But if you go to verse 12, you realize why God is saying this. Because God's people have no intention of changing their ways, have no intention of turning from their evil. They have no intention of listening to God. It changes the tone. Without verse 12, you get a God can reform you. With verse 12, you get the I'm not going to be reformed. And for me, that completely changes God's tone. This goes from being an object lesson with some hypotheticals to a very permanent, no, we're doing this. It makes it much, much, much harsher. Now my second question this morning, does anyone, can anyone tell me what a prophet is? Yes. With one, so the answer that I gave is somebody that is chosen by God to speak God's message. But almost universally, the part that you're missing is that message is never a happy message. You can get rid of verse 12 now. It's not a happy message. The prophets are never chosen by God to be like, hey, you guys are great. I love you. <laughs> You're the best. 
God's never calling a prophet to go, oh, good job, it's the best. No, that's not what God is doing. The prophets are always chosen to bring a message that no one wants to hear. Always chosen to bring that just miserable message. Now, Jeremiah is a prophet. God has chosen Jeremiah to bring a message to God's people that they don't want to hear. So why would God, I mean, we get the image, but why would God take a prophet to see the potter reforming a pot? I mean, I love the potter image. I don't, did anyone else throw pottery in high school? Did anyone else do really badly when they threw pottery at high school? <laughs> like, because I'm thinking of the pots that I threw. I have one little bowl that was supposed to be a jar, but I could never get it to come back in. And so my teacher was willing to just let me stay at the bowl. My mom still has it for some reason. <laughs> oh no, that's a lie. It's in my office. It's going to get dark and stuff like that. But either way, like, I... You know that the potter had a pot that was just wasn't right. And at a certain point, you can't, you can't fix without putting it back together, without smashing it back down, without that difficult work. And I think that's what God is trying to tell the prophet is, I can fix this. Tell my people I can fix this. But it's not going to be, like, it's not going to be the same. It's going to be a new thing if I fix this. If you let me fix this, it will be a new thing. And again, remember, the message that Jeremiah is taking is a message people don't want to hear. People don't want to hear that God can fix them, but they're going to be new. They're going to be different. And it's probably not going to be an amazing, fun experience. So then the question for us today is this. Do we want the potter to reform us? Do we want the potter to remake us? Because sometimes those pots that are funky and weird and go in all different directions, they're fun, they're childlike, they're, they're neat. But when it comes to their actual purpose, they can't do it. When God reforms us and changes us, we don't get to be like children anymore. And by like children, I don't mean faithful. Like the faith of a child is great. But as Wendy said, how many times do you just have to tell your kids, because I said so? We don't get to be those kids that do whatever they want, that live this life however they want. We have to grow up and mature if God is going to reform us. And again, like I implied, this, this process of being reformed by God, it's painful. I'm going to apologize to people who are here. You're going to hear the running metaphor more. Now that I am trying to run, you're going to hear the running metaphor more and more and more. I'm sorry. But running hurts. It hurts. Knees hurt, feet hurt. I get home and I'm exhausted. And I haven't gone that far. It hurts. As I said a couple of weeks ago, or last week, I can't remember. Disciplined people, they have the discipline, they have the freedom to run 10 miles, but that requires a lot of work and a lot of pain and a lot of 
being molded into something different. Being reformed by God is not an easy process. It's not going to church and singing a fun song and saying, I'm a Christian, and that being the end of it. It's a tough thing. It's like working out. It's like dieting. It's like learning a new skill. It's like learning a new language or an ancient language. It's hard work. And it stretches you. But I think worst, worst of all, is that sometimes that new person that God makes you, that person that God makes you into, the people you love and the people that love you may reject who you become. If you really dedicate your life to Jesus as attested to in scripture. Justice, peace, love, those become the focus of your personality, the focus of your life. And when that becomes the focus of your life, you see all the injustice in the world. You see all the pain in the world. You see how the system, how the economic system, how the legal system, how the justice system creates injustice in our world, and you cannot help but speak out about it. You cannot help but speak out how by the, col the color of your skin determines more by your outcome than almost anything else, or your zip code, or what job your parents have has a bigger effect on your outcomes than anything else. You can't help but see these things, and you can't help but speak out about these things. And I can tell you from experience, there are people you love that will get tired of hearing you talk about these things. The new person, the person that God makes you into, and truly, it's the truest version of you, because that's who God made you from the beginning, may be rejected by those Here's the crummy thing, though. Continuing as your own old version leads to destruction. Because that's what happens. That's what happens with God's people. Jeremiah tells them all of these things, and then we get verse 12. No, we're going to go our own way. And what happens? They fall to the Babylonians. They go into exile because they forgot who they were. They forgot who God made them and they did not give God the opportunity to change them. They chose greed, they chose hatred, they chose to lack hospitality. And to continue doing that. And that led to their downfall. They forgot love, they forgot sacrifice. And that led to their downfall. Because the prophets, the prophets can tell the future, but it's not like some psychic thing. It's like, this is the Powerball numbers. No, the, the prophets can tell the future because they see the actions and they see the consequences of those actions. And so for us today, the question is, will we let the potter reform us or not? Will we let the potter make us into something new or not? <clears throat> because we know the consequences. We know the difficulty of the potter making us into something new. <clears throat> but we also know what happens if we don't. So again, the question for you, for me, for all of us is, Will we let the potter make us into something new or not? Amen. Please join us in our hymn of response, Change My Heart, O God.
change my heart, oh God, make it ever true, change my heart, oh God, may I be like you, you are the potter, I am the clay. seeking for the Holy Spirit to guide and feed us through this meal, seeking to live in the example and path of Christ. Come, feast with me, and let us seek God together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, Creator of the universe, with joy we praise you and give you thanks. You brought light from darkness and drew land from the sea. You made us in your image to live with one another in love. You promised yourself in covenant with us. You told us your purpose in your law, and you called, a, called for justice through the prophets. Through long generations, you have been faithful to your people. Therefore, we join our voices with all those who sing your praise. Oh, 
praise you, most holy God, for the gift of your Son, Jesus. He told your story, healed the sick, and welcomed the stranger. Obeying you, he took up his cross and died that we might live. Rising from the dead, he overcame death, the firstborn of the new creation. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we break bread and share one cup giving thanks for your saving love in Jesus Christ, and offering ourselves to live in him, for him in joy and grateful praise. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine. Make them the body and blood of Christ, that we may be his body for the world. By your Spirit, make us one with him and one another. Send us out to live for others as Christ lived for us, and keep us faithful until we feast with him in glory. All thanks and praise to you, O triune God, now and forever. share with one another and come together with what is on our hearts and our minds the sharing of our joys and concerns. Our prayer concerns this morning, uh, Donna Luckman, Rick Mulvania, Paul and Diane Son John, Heather Chapman, Cooper, Price Bowie, Diane Gillespie, Jan Sauter, Glenda Grunder, Glenda and Kirk's daughter Paula and Glenda and Kirk's daughter-in-law, Nora Brown's parents, Cravo and Grace Hubbard, our members and friends in care facilities, including Pat Jim Collins, Jesse Borgman, Ken Stinson, Mike Trujillo, Roberta Larson. Uh, we pray for all of our veteran service personnel and our families, all who have been sentenced to life without parole, all fire, law enforcement, and EMS personnel, all those suffering from war and violence in Ukraine and around the world, and for our mission partners at Mission Starfish Aid. Mission Starfish Aid. Are there any other joys and concerns to share at this time? Joy seeing new faces in church today. It is a joy seeing new faces in church today. And some ones that haven't been here for a while. And some ones that haven't been here for a while. I'm going to apologize. I don't know who's newish. I mean, I kind of know who's newish and who's the oldest, but I'm new too, so there we go. Well, my sister Holly is here. She's been living in Mesa, Arizona for about the last 38, 39 years. And her and her husband are moving to the Quad Cities to Gray and Mound and all places. And so I welcome her and her husband back home. They haven't, he's never been in snow. She hasn't been in snow for 40 years. So. <laughs> we'll see how snow goes this winter. I mean, I'm not saying there aren't worse places to experience the snow, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any others? If not, then let's turn our hearts and our minds to God. Loving God, we thank you for this day. We ask your blessing upon us. We ask that you be with those who need physical healing and with those who provide healing. We ask that you be with those who mourn and you provide comfort. We ask that you provide you be with those who need mental healing and you be with the caregivers, and you provide. With all of our concerns, loving God, we also lift up to the joy, the joy of this worshiping community, of new faces and old faces returned, of those who are here every week who just love being here, of this opportunity to bow at the foot of the cross, to lift praises and sing songs, and to dine at this table together. Loving God, as we have lifted our hearts and our minds to you, we have lifted our prayers to you, now we lift our voices as one. Using the words Jesus taught his friends and disciples, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was arrested, took bread. He sat around a table with his disciples, including the one that would betray him, and he took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and he said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the same way, after he they shared the meal, he took the cup. And again, giving thanks to God, he poured it and said, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink from it, do this in remembrance of me. And so, my friends, every time we eat from this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's saving death until he is with us again. The gifts of God, for the people of God. As is tradition in this congregation, as I have learned, and a tradition that I greatly love, as you receive the bread, we invite you to partake, spending a moment with God as you receive. But hold on to the cup that we might all partake together. The gifts of God. My server's pretty nice. <laughs>
the cup of salvation poured for you. Let us pray. Loving God, you graciously feed us who have received these holy mysteries with the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation. May we who have received this sacrament be strengthened in your service. We who have sung your praises tell of your glory and truth. We who have seen the greatness of your love see you face to face in your kingdom. For you have made us your own people by the death and resurrection of your Son, our Lord, and the life-giving power of your Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Fine. Uh, with, okay, so oh, the doxology. That'll be next. Yeah, off yeah. Of Oh, did I? I, I said the wrong word. Okay, let's do the other one. Here we go. God told us what is good and what God requires of us to do justice, embrace faithful love, and walk humbly with God. May we do just that in every aspect of our lives in our spending, in our saving, and in our giving. May we be generous, justice-seeking, and loving with our money, our, our money, our lives. Will the ushers please help us give our offerings? They keep me around for comedy. <laughs> Will the ushers please come? Yeah, Okay. okay. I'm somewhere. So. Please join me in the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him. Ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join me in the hymn, Take, O oh, Take Me As I Am.
this yeah. direction. Yeah. Ish. Um, but go get cookies and coffee first. Um, and I will be there shortly, but I'm going to get cookies and coffee and say hi to people. Um, may we let God be the potter of our vessels. Not resisting change, but being moldable. That God can make us into something new. Not following our own ways and our own path, but our own desires. But following what God would have us to be. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you. May God be gracious unto you and lift up countenance upon you and give you peace. And all God's people said, Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Amen.